So this is just a little party prezzy. The scorpion. Mm. Because why? When Jesse told us about this episode, he pitched it as like a who's afraid of Virginia Woolf kind of piece in that, you know, marriage tensions at a party, trying to keep up a good front, trying to keep up a happy marriage face. It's a long and interesting journey to play these characters and see how they develop. It's just another point in their relationship, which is brilliant to chart. Uh, so we got a couple of extra names for the guest list. Right. Madsen is, in fact, coming now. Ooh, good. That's good for me, right? I mean, I my yep. chance to dance. I can secure my spot. He's, he's got to make a good impression for Lucas Madsen. He feels like he's got to do a good job because it's a bit, you know, he's running the whole show. Last season, Madsen's offered to buy the company and implied that he was going to be a big figure through this season. In the company, are you hands-on or more of an overview guy? Let me ask you this. What would you value more highly? Really? Things are going wrong. The stakes are very high because of who's in the running to be president. Make team called and they wanted to know if you might be willing to, you know, drop out. Of the election? Yes, of the election. They think that you'd be a good fit for an ambassadorial appointment. Things got very real very quickly. Connor created his own little world. Anything to sort of get some sort of positive reaction from Pop. And uh, now that he's gone, it just seems like, well, hang on and see where it goes. How do you like Oman? I have to check. See what my woman thinks about Oman. <laughs> nice. Of all the, the couple relationships in the show, Willa and Connor are the most successful. And with Shiv and Tom, you'd think that maybe they had a chance. And then pretty much from the beginning, it was troubled. Can we chat about stuff? I have some thoughts. I might need your advice. No. No? They're such an odd couple. There's been so much, like, snotty little stuff from, from Roman toward Jerry. Jerry. What? The firing you thing? That wasn't real. No. No. I feel that she's quite upset about that it didn't work out as a business partnership with him. And so I think she's very, just very, very disappointed. She's done. She's shown up to let him know, I expect oodles of money, and I want to control the narrative, and I have a whole team, a PR team that's going to make it sound like I want it to sound. If I ever get a whiff of anything undermining my narrative any time in the next five years, mm -hmm. I will sue, and I will go public with as so many, stupid. many pictures of your genitalia All right. that I have in my Great. possession. Mm -hmm. Have I made myself and, clear? Yes, absolutely. But the subtext is, fuck you, you know, like, and just turn on her heel and leave. I'm gonna... What? Yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm gonna bed. I'm bushwhacked. My eyes are sandpaper. Stay for 45 minutes more. I'm just a little tired because all the fun gossip that I've been hearing from everywhere at this party in my house is that I'm gonna be shit-canned. So yeah, I think they're in a, a quite a curious place, which is they both know exactly what happened, but while she won't talk about it, she has this kind of leverage. Sarah and I were talking and we sort of worked out that they hadn't ever really screamed and shouted at each other in that way. It's always been, the lid has always gone on quite quickly in their arguments. It's great to explore a different dynamic with, with uh, two characters. Should we have a real conversation? With a scorpion? That was no. a friendly thing. Oh, that was yeah, a friendly sure. Thing. You're real friendly. <laughs> I think you find it very hard to think about me. What? And I think you shouldn't have even married me. It's a brilliant scene because they both feel like they've been struggling with all kinds of things, and he's really wounded again by her belittling him in front of all these incredibly powerful people at this uh, pre-election party that they're hosting. A lot of that is driven from, from her discomfort with where her relationship with Tom is. At this party here, there are maybe 40 of the most important people in America, and you have just walked all around all evening telling them all that I'm gonna get fired. No, it was implied, likely. It certainly gets explosive in this scene. Like, I remember <laughs> he yells at one point, You were going to see me get sent to fucking prison! And because we're on, on like a balcony, all the buildings around would echo with, Prison, prison, prison. 
You were only with me to get to power. Well, you got it now, Tom. You've got it. I'm with you because I love you! Bullshit! You're fucking me for my DNA. You are fucking me for a fucking ladder. <laughs> like, it's really fun to just yell at somebody and go at that pace with somebody that you trust and doing that with Matthew, who's, who's such a darling to, like, yell at. And it sort of becomes farcical halfway through the episode. I mean, it's just a wonderful episode.